Excuse me, wiping my allergy eye. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon now. I'm Donna Maria Coles Johnson, the founder and CEO at IndieBusinessNetwork.com, and welcome to the Maker Mastermind Show for today, June the 7th. I'm so excited that you're here. So listen, I promised you an awesome show, and I'm going to deliver. Let me first introduce to you my very wonderful co-host, Christine Loriano from Basics Marketing. Hey, Christine. Yay. Hey, everybody. Hey, John. Yes. Hi, Good to be here with everybody. What a great show. This is like, this is like an indie cruise reunion, you guys. We were, we were in, a, where were we? Was it, where were we? Punta Cana. Punta Cana. Punta Cana. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful island on indie cruise. Um, just a few months ago, I can't believe how much time has gone by. And we had a fantastic time. So we're just going to continue all the frivolity while we're here <laughs> as we also pick Dawn's brain. Let me tell you about Dawn Fitch. Okay, I met Dawn maybe eight years ago, maybe even more than that, when she first joined the Indie Business Network. Her business is Puka Pure and Simple dot com. Aloha Kiwi, right? The new <laughs> pure and simple. And Dawn is the founder. <laughs> Dawn is, I told you guys, y'all are gonna laugh. Okay. It was on Wednesday. We have no fun Wednesday. here. We need to get over the hump. Dawn's gonna help you get over the hump, okay? Because I always tell her she should start like a business comedian. <laughs> she's she's so hilarious about entrepreneurship. She's the founder and CEO at PukaPureAndSimple.com in Orange, New Jersey. Since she started her business, um, she has had her products in spas and boutiques. She has had her products in natural food stores, like they're still sold in Whole Foods Market, select Whole Foods Markets. She sells them at her website, PukaPureAndSimple.com. She's very active on social media, especially Instagram, so you need to get over to Pucalita. We're going to hear the story of Pucalita um, and follow her on Instagram. Um, she makes the most amazing sugar scrub body oils and uh, just body butter. There's a butter club. She's the author of two books, her, most, her, her first one called Moving Through Open Doors, and her second book on social media, and the name escapes me, Dawn. The S factor. The S factor. The S factor meaning social, okay? And let me tell you, Dawn is social. Now, let me just also tell you there's a quiet side to Dawn. So don't feel like you have to be, you know, all this, you know, big extroverted person to do some of the things and, and, and follow some of Dawn's uh, success tips today. You don't. She is amazing. She is on when she is on, and I have masterminded with her. I have been despised with her. Let me tell you, she is off, <laughs> off okay? So this is good news for all of us. She has graced the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine, and she has been featured in many, many, many magazines throughout her career. She is also a speaker. She's a business trainer, and she is just an amazing person, and you need to know Dawn Fitch. Welcome to Maker Mastermind, Dawn. Thank you, Donna Marie. I want to meet me. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here today. Okay, Dawn. So we're going to dive in. You know what our first question always is. Dawn, when did you stop making stuff and start making money? Tell us the story. <laughs> okay. Um, Puka is actually... 16 years old now. I've um, been doing it for 16 years. I was in corporate America and I had gotten sick and just trying to live a healthier lifestyle. So just started developing these products just for myself. I kept going to the doctor and they kept saying, oh, there's nothing wrong. So I'm like, all right, well, I have to feel better. So just did some research and just started, you know, doing things for myself to feel better. Uh, my mom, when we were little, actually called us her pukalitas. We have no idea what that means, but she loves us. So we know it was something good. Um, and I'm a graphic artist by trade. So everything I made, you know, the graphic artist would be said, put a label on it, make it neat. And then I really started getting into it. I wasn't selling it. I was just making it for myself. Then I started making it for friends. And then they started giving me some good feedback and still was not thinking business. And I was spending money, but I was, you know, making little things, but I was just enjoying it. So one of my friends were like, you have so much stuff in your apartment. Like, Dawn does not cook. You will never get food at my house. You'll be moisturized, but you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I had shea butter in the kitchen, in the stove. So they're like, let's take all your products. Let's take it to a festival. Let's just see if you sell something. And I'm like, all right. In my mind, I'm like, I don't want to do this. But if I sell a couple of things, I could get some new shoes. That's how business wise I was thinking. Um, so like we set up a table and I actually, 
I don't, I guess it was a fear of success type of thing. I sort of hid away from the table. I didn't want to even see if people were going to come, if they were going to buy. And we sold out that day. And that's when I realized I was like, okay, people just bought stuff that I made in my kitchen on my stove. And, you know, I said to my mother, I said, Ma, they think this is real stuff. She's like, it is real stuff, Dawn. So I think making that first, when actually seeing the first person come up, and like I said, I was watching from a distance because I just didn't really want to, I just didn't have the confidence. I was like, this is just something fun. And watching people and watching my friends speak about it and explain it and put it on people and people were giving money and putting it in a bag. And I was like, this is a business. And I was like, I'm going to start a business. And like I said, I had already been spending a lot of money on supplies and to, to get something back that day made me realize, you know what, mm. this is a business. And I should have realized it before because I was giving it to friends and family and they were liking it. They were appreciating it. But in my mind, I'm still thinking, well, this is something in my kitchen on my stove. So I actually seeing that first sale made me think a lot bigger, like this could actually be something. Yes, yes. I love that. And you guys, I know you can relate to this. So many of you can relate to it. Please make sure you leave a comment and let us know if this yeah. resonates with you. And by the way, you're going to have an opportunity to win some of Dawn's products today. Yes. And that's right. That's right. Of course, we got to have some swag. Everybody needs to right. all your stuff. <laughs> Um, to, to be entered to win, I want you to tag a friend and share this live video while we're on the air so other people can come and learn. And we're going to make sure that you are entered to win some awesome stuff from Dawn. So Dawn, the word I heard there in your story, uh, well, I, I heard several things, but one jumped out at me and that was confidence. You know, when we start a business, mm. we are expected to be at our most confident, but we are really at our most vulnerable. Right? right. So how did you move past that feeling of lack of confidence to be able to do things like you're doing now, which is come live, you know, on a show in front of hundreds of people? I just actually, for, for me, starting to actually sell and realizing this is a good product. I'm making something that's good and people enjoy it. And I think that's something that we actually have to stop and sit down and really think about and put that in our mind. This is not just for fun. We're, we are smart we're educating ourselves we're taking the time to learn about these ingredients and we are benefiting our especially to start out our friends and family and i think that's when it started to really resonate with me when i'm like i like my products other people like my products i have you know i can give myself credit for taking the time to put out a good product and to learn about the things and to do some research in business and and i think at some point we have to stop and give ourselves credit and we have to write a new story for ourselves and we have to see ourselves as business owners. And sometimes that can be hard at the beginning, but I'm telling you, it's fake it till you make it. You know, it really is. You've got, you, do. you have to start saying, this is a business. I'm a business owner. I'm a credible business owner and I know what I'm doing and people enjoy my products. And if you have to just keep saying that to yourself until it really clicks and it doesn't click with me every day, there's still sometimes and I'm like, mm, Donna Maria, you know, so, I mean, there's still some times when I have to remind myself of that every day. Like, you know, I deserve the things that are happening because I've created them. You know, I worked hard and this is what we all do. We work very hard. And for some reason we feel like, oh, it's our own business. So it's not a real tangible thing. It mm. is. We are business owners. We are boss chicks. That's right. <laughs> we right. are boss chicks and, and you certainly are one so so Dawn would you say that just taking incremental baby steps moving forward in your business over time that confidence comes but we should not expect it at the very beginning right and that that's why I said fake it till you make it and it's such a cliche but it really really like I said my first now I had been making products for uh, about eight months before I went to that festival, maybe even a year before I went to that first festival. And I was still hiding around the corner, not wanting mm -hmm. to see if people are going to buy my stuff. But when I did actually come out and speak to people, I was confident. I was like, oh, yes, it's great. I started explaining and saying things. But in my mind, I was still you know, doing this. So it's going to come. It's going to grow as you grow. So if you have that feeling at the beginning and you don't have that confidence, that doesn't mean there's anything wrong. We all go through that. And there's going to be ebbs and flows and dips of that where you're starting to feel a little insecure. But you just got to talk yourself back through it and get back on your game and you'll start to feel it again. Dawn, one of the things I know you and I have discussed on so many occasions, and Christine, of course, as well, is the importance of having a brand message, the importance of being able to create an impression and an idea and a feeling in the mind of your customer 
your target customer when they see your brand. So tell us what your brand message is and what are some of your tips to help other people formulate a cohesive brand message? Okay. I definitely know that I speak to, I mean, I started the business because I had gotten sick. So I definitely speak to the, um, we say baby steps. People that, I was not always a healthy person. I'm not a uh, Miss Go Green and everything now, but that is an important part of Puka. I, because of getting sick, I had to change my life and I had to change my lifestyle and it wasn't easy. So Puka is, represents baby steps to better health. Start with drinking a little more water. Start with this, start with that. So that's what we always try to tell people. Bath and body, what I put on my skin, which is going into my system, is one part of the health message of Puka. And then the overall message we tell people is Puka pure and simple. Make the baby steps, make the changes to be a little bit healthier in your life. We started with bath and body, and it's pushed me into other areas of my life. So those are our, our core people that we try to... Um, uh, that, that are our core customers. So we don't only talk about uh, Bath and Body. We've developed the brand sort of as a lifestyle um, so that it, it's, it, has, it gives us a little more context in which to talk about. So we're not just sell, sell, sell. We're giving people content. We're giving people tips. But we're also sharing our experiences, that it's not easy. That, you know, I mean, you don't want to hear from, you know, a, a 22-year-old health guru who's, you know, in perfect shape. No, I'm just trying to get better baby steps at a time. So we connect to people on that level. And then we say Bath and Body and your products are one part of that. So your brand has to be more than just your products. It has to stand for something. It has to reach a certain brand of people. And then you can actually build it out a little more and build a more robust, um, uh, more robust area for content. It gives us bigger content for social media and for other things instead of just sell, 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 puka. We talk about lots of other things that draw people in. All right. And I know Christine has some questions about that content. So we will oh, get there right oh, now. Let you go. know oh, I do. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, I, and as I listen to you, Don, I'm like, oh, all these great content pieces. Because so many times when people think about content, they think, I have to write my blog post. Right. But you have really created an amazing content strategy, your marketing strategy. So, you know, first, I have, I have several questions, but first, you know, how do you market your products? And you're big on social media, which we'll get to that. But how did you start? Where are you now with marketing your products? Um, I, we do a big, a very big email marketing. I knew, and this is part of Donna Maria, always in my ear from the very beginning, get your emails, collect your mailing list. Um, I mean, social media is fantastic, but social media, your customers have to come to you. They have to come to your social media platforms. With a great email list and an email base, you're putting your message right into their email box. So we send out a newsletter twice a week and we do a lot of content with it. So we do a lot of tips and we do a lot of other things because people see a newsletter twice a week. They're like, uh, I just ordered Puka last week. I don't need to see this again. Yeah, you do because there's lots of other things in there. There's, um, like I said, tips. There's things about other brand owners. So there are other interesting things. So we're very, very heavy on our email marketing um, content. That's one of the biggest thing. Social media is great for us, but email marketing twice a week, we, you know, and then blogging and Donna Marie, I start, well, I started a podcast, which I need to go back to. So I definitely use all of those things, but for us, email marketing is key. See, so that's really cool. And I'm going to ask you to repeat that again, because email marketing is huge. And yeah, social media works to, to right, help people know who you are and bring them to, so they can sign up for, for your email. So, right. you know, but you said something really important. You're not just always selling. So you're, you're creating tips, you're helping people, which is what your community wants, right? right. So what kind of, um, cause I get all excited. What kinds of tips are you getting? Because, you know, some of our other makers out there, you know, get caught up on what, what do I write every week? Right. So, you know, you write tips, you write, research you I mean could you talk a little bit about that sure. um I sort of like I said I because our brand focus is baby steps to natural health and I'm doing it it gives me a lot to write about I write about the ingredients that we use in puka so I might tell or sometimes things that aren't even in puka what's so great about beet juice what's so great about avocado? 
So I do a lot of those things about what's so great about these ingredients, but I also detail the things that I'm doing. I started running, you know, how do you, how, how do you start running? I started, you know, what, what kind of sneakers do you use? What kind of, what am I having for breakfast? Um, things like that. What can you have for breakfast? What kind of rest? I even get into recipes and I'm no cook, but I get into healthy recipes. So I think it has to be authentic in, um, and when you build your brand, I'm sure you're going to build it around your own authenticity. So then you can also, like I said, you can pull in other things. It doesn't have to stay to the product. So I get into food. I get into um, natural health. I get into vitamins. Um, I get into color theory to make yourself feel, feel better. I, I really, I think a natural health, you can sort of put it in a big bubble. So this, it gives me so much content. And I don't have to stretch for it because it's actually what I'm doing in my life. So sometimes the content is easier if it's something that you're actually doing or using, um, you know, or you're actually living. Living in your body and your brand. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love it. So tell us what you use for your email marketing. What are your technological tools that you use for email marketing? Um, I have a cross between, I'm using Constant Contact and MailChimp. And um, what I always do is anytime we do any events, we go out, we either have our, um, our iPad and we collect email addresses, the footer in my email, the footer of any of my staff email, everywhere we go, we're trying to collect our, our um, and we didn't even know what we were going to do with them at the beginning. So a lot of people that I've met said, oh, well, I don't have a newsletter, so I don't collect emails. You're going to have one one day. So wherever you go, you got, and you have to collect it. You can't just swipe when people order. You can't just swipe their emails. You have to actually ask them for their email address. So it's very important to constantly ask people wherever you go, build the list. Even if you don't know what you're going to write and you don't have a newsletter yet, build the list. We, we've been building the list, list probably since maybe 07. And I think we're at maybe 11,000 people on our newsletter. Do they all open it? No. <laughs> but we have them and we're constantly adding to and then we're cleaning them out. So we use MailChimp and we use Constant Contact. Um, Why do you use both? What, what, what's the uh, difference well, between I'm, them? I'm trying to migrate over. The pricing is about the same on both. I've been a Constant Contact girl from the beginning. But I'm starting to see a lot of people using MailChimp and I went over there. And I really like the ease of MailChimp. Yeah. Um, I like some of the other things that they offer on MailChimp. I, I, so I started because I have such a big list and I'm so used to it. I have a body butter club and I put that list into MailChimp just so I can really acclimate myself before I move my entire list over. So I like it so far. And if I give it, I'm going to give it a couple more months and then I, I do plan to move everything over to MailChimp. I, I like constant contact. I just think MailChimp is a little bit more user friendly and it offers a little more. You know, I, I think that's a smart move. I know migrating is hard because I've done it, but MailChimp is offering something new and integrative to social media. It seems like every week. I mean, they've just got it going on. And I think they are also more targeted specifically towards solopreneurs and constant contacts serve small businesses. But I have found over the years that MailChimp seems to be the one that really just wants to be your little pocket companion that right. goes with you everywhere as a solopreneur. It's almost like they've positioned themselves to be your uh, vice president of marketing. Almost right. and, continue and they educate. integrate with all the, the e-commerce stores too. Yeah. Right. So it integrates yeah. really well. And Constant Contact doesn't integrate with, like I'm using um, Volusion. I'm not sure if they, mm -hmm. they don't integrate. They do, but not as well as MailChimp. And yeah. just like you said, Donna Maria, MailChimp has done some great branding. Like they're friendly. They're fun when I go to their site. They so are. I'm like, you know, and I'm always looking for fun. So well, yeah. and they are, you know, and I want to mention this to you, Don. You mentioned that your business was all about, you know, small steps to health, baby steps to health. I like that. But you know what? It's also fun. Like you are fun. You are hilarious. You are funny. Um, and and so let's just go there because on your Instagram at Instagram.com forward slash Pukalita, you <laughs> you create these most amazing cute videos. I want to hear about those. You guys can head on over there after our show. But let's get Dawn's tips on like what tools do you use to create these videos and what is the method that you're using to engage people because your videos get a lot of views. They get a lot of comments and people seem to be having fun. Thank you, Donna Maria. 
Um, actually, what I, what I actually did is I moved a lot of the videos over to Dawn Fitch Official, a little more on my personal branding side. Um, I guess I was just like overthrowing Puka with my fun videos. I was like, all right, I better put some products over here. So I started making the videos just because I was watching all of these YouTubers and bloggers and I was seeing the interaction they were getting. And I just took my, I, I'm a Galaxy girl, I took my Galaxy and I just started documenting my day. And then I found an app called Viva Video which is V-I-V-A video. It's a free app. You can download it on your phone and you can edit and put together small movies. So I started just doing a movie that I could do on Instagram and I just started calling a hashtag one minute day and people started following it. So and it really is the silliest stuff that happens to me in one minute of the day. I mean, there's stuff about me shopping with my mom for uh, linen. Really boring, but it's, you know, it was fun to me and people like to see um, the backside of the brand. They like to know you. And a lot of, a lot of people connect, I think, to the brand owners and to the brand, I want to say first, and maybe the product second. You know, once they fall in love with the brand and the person, then that really is sort of what catapults them to build your brand loyalty and to buy your products. And, and just like I said, they're not going to buy products every day. But if you give them a reason to always be in the forefront of their mind, oh, there's a new video up. Oh, there's a new newsletter coming. There's always something coming from Puka and it's splattered with buy something. It's not buy something every day. Yeah. So I really enjoy the videos. Um, and it's a lot of, video is huge. People love video. You can yeah. do, I mean, you're doing Insta story, you're doing Facebook story, um, you can do YouTube videos. There's so many ways to do videos. You don't have to have expensive equipment. A lot of these phones have great cameras. My Galaxy has a great camera on there. You can edit it right there on your phone using Viva Video. And on in, in an hour, you can have a, a one minute spot on Instagram and use your hashtags, hashtags, hashtag. There it is. Viva no, video. But yeah, where, what is the best place to go to search for what hashtags to use? Is there like a repository of hashtags or someplace we can go to find the best hashtags? I actually. What'd you say? For, for the target audience that we're trying to reach, is there a place to search for those that you know of? Like, I know you can look, look. I, I don't believe always in finding the right tool. I believe in um, doing it and then finding the right tool by doing it wrong. Like, that's what I do. You guys have seen me do it here on this show, right? I've <laughs> done this show. I forgot to push the record button. We've had problems inside the Indie Business Network membership as I learned how to do video. So, you know, we, we can learn on our own. So, but I'm asking this question just in case some people might want to find a tool that they can use to match, the, match certain popular hashtags with the target audience they're trying to reach. And at the beginning, when I started searching for hashtags, I found a lot of pay for sites. And I was like, I don't want to pay for this. Yeah. So then I just started doing the regular Google, and I would Google top yeah. hashtags for entrepreneurs, right. top hashtags for Bath and Body. Top, right. And it gives you like a sampling usually of 20 or 30. You can put 30 hashtags at a time on Instagram. So what I did is I just started testing them out. And I would see where I was getting the most leads from. And I started taking things out. And then once I had it, I have Dawn Fitch Official hashtags saved in a, in a WordPress site. I have Pukalita hashtags. I have Entrepreneur hashtag. So then I started building little things. And whatever I'm posting, if I'm posting something that's more about an entrepreneur, I copy paste those hashtags in. If it's more about... Um, you know, natural health, I copy tape, paste those hashtags in. So I did spend some time researching by strict, by actually just Googling best hashtags for and whatever I was looking yeah. for. And then I just tested them out and saw where I would get, I would come back to some yeah. pictures and like, whoa, there's a lot, you know, and then save those so you could just copy paste them in. But you cannot have posted Instagram without your hashtags. It's important. One thing I want, oh, I want to, I want to jump in with you too because because also, did you, when you tested, because that's really important when you tested, did you also click the hashtag and see where it takes you? Yeah. Because we've done that before yeah. that with, with another member. We're like, well, we're not using that hashtag. So make sure you check your hashtags too. Exactly. Yeah, I've gotten rid of some hashtags like, oh, I don't want to be in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah. so glad yeah. you said that. Yes, test them out, please. Yeah. Because doing your own research, like, you know, I want to encourage everyone in this regard because this, this actual subject came up in the Business Network Member Secret Facebook group just yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. Like, what hashtag should I use for my brand? And the answer is, we don't know. 
But right. you can find out if you know who your target audience is, yep. go over to Instagram and look at other companies that are trying to reach the same target audience who have more than 10 followers, find the right. ones that are actually successful and right. create the engagement, see what hashtags they use, go over and have a look at them and start doing some of your own testing. And you will discover because Instagram runs on hashtags, yeah. um, you will be able to discover what is attracting your target audience and what isn't. And that way you can narrow your own search down yourself and be more sure of the results that you're going to get than you would be if you went to some generic website and found all the hair care hashtags and so forth and started using them. Yeah. And, and start to just think strategically. I mean, sometimes it doesn't have to be that hard. If I'm doing a workshop in my area, I hashtag Carney, I hashtag New Jersey, I hashtag workshop, I have hashtag DIY. You know, I mean, don't forget the simple things, the very simple yeah. things, whatever your workshop or your product is about, location, if it's event, hashtag those things first, that your local things, because that'll bring in a local crowd. If it's something that's, you know, um, a workshop or it's something you want people to attend, if you have a brick and mortar or retail. And Dawn, you've written two books, Moving Through Open Doors and also the S Factor. Make sure you guys look for those books. I have them both and they're wonderful. Um, and we've had Dawn uh, talk in our membership about uh, writing her books and, and the reason for them and how she began to get the idea of writing a book. One of our Maker Mastermind shows is with uh, Kayla Fioravanti about how you can use um, the, your, your platform as an entrepreneur to create multiple streams of income. And one of them can come through authoring books. So Don, tell us your book authoring story. How did that get started and how has that helped your main Pukalita business grow? Okay. The first book was Moving Through Open Doors and I'm a faith-based person. So there were so many things. People constantly said, well, how did that happen? How did you get this? How did that? So I said, you know what? I'm going to write a book. And then I was like, oh, it's going to be easy. It wasn't easy at the beginning. But you know what the hardest part was? Getting started. Once I got started, it's your story. I didn't, I, I, my book is short. I call it like a Who Moved My Cheese book. It doesn't have to be a whole bunch of chapters. It's just my story. Um, I self-published it on 48hourbooks.com. And it took me maybe about six to eight months to um, write the book. And I did have a friend who was an editor go over and make sure, you know, I spelled everything right. I'm like, oh, is my name spelled right? She's like, good to go. Um, but I think it was a really important tool that I use when speaking. Um, I do a lot of speaking to um, children and small groups and things like that. And just a lot of, I mean, I sell the book. Um, when I do speaking engagements, I bring the book with me and people buy the book. So it's a nice um, addition to your brand uh, besides revenue, but also that tells your brand story. It gives your brand a little bit more weight. Oh, there's a book as well. So you have loyal followers and fans that are, are actually buying your products and they'll actually go and buy the book as well. So it's, it's a nice piece of your brand that can constantly be uh, replenished and put out there. And the S factor, which is actually an ebook came um, from, as, as you had said, I was so blessed to be on the cover of black enterprise. And that story came from, I always say um, it, it, that it could have been anybody. I mean, I like to say it was supposed to be me, but it could have been anybody um, that came from a tweet. From just knowing, you know, following different reporters and a reporter tweeted out, does anybody use social media to get people into their brick and mortar? I didn't even see it. My Twitter friend said, oh, you know, Pukalita does. And from that interaction, the, the uh, reporter just asked if they could ask me a question, ask me a few questions, that it was going to go online. Uh, then they called again and said, you know what, we're going to put this actually in our print magazine. And then they called back again and they said, we want to ask you a few more things and we're going to send the photographer. Now I'm getting my hair done. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so they told me what to wear. They came out. And from that, they said, you know what? We're going to consider you for the cover of Black Enterprise. Answering a tweet got me on the cover of Black Enterprise. So I, I tell people, like, I am all about social media as um, just a, a way to really propel your brand. If you really, you, you'll, get it, you'll get back what you put out there. Um, so then I wrote the S factor after that because I was like, hey, I'm on the cover of a magazine. I'm going to do yeah. another book. <laughs> I so I let it. people know in the S factor uh, the types of things and types of social media that we did that helped us to get noticed. And maybe it'll get you on a cover of a magazine too. Quick question to go along with that too. So because you talk about you know, using social media to get on the cover, but you engaged with 
people that you wanted to, you know, editors and things like that. Can you just talk real quickly for other people that want to start doing that? Because they're not really sure how to do that. Right. So it seems all scary and everything. So, right. I mean, it's really big and to guest post and all that. It, it is, you know what, it is big. And I think that's the great thing about social media. It gives us access that we never had before. Because, I mean, as much as we want stories, those reporters are looking for content. They're, they're looking for us. They want to find us to find these stories. You just have to be visible for them. So I create Twitter lists. I have lists of reporters from magazines that I'm interested, that fit my brand, health magazines and um, different types of magazines that I want to be in. I follow those reporters. I follow the editors. I follow anybody. You can go to the masthead for those magazines and see what their, everybody has their Twitter listed now. And then you just, I make a list and I follow them. And then whenever they post something, it pops up and I'm retweeting. I know they're like, all right, Dawn, we get it. <laughs> want to be in the magazine. But I'm like, hey guys, that was fun. <laughs> well, I'm retweeting them. I'm laughing. I'm commenting. But it's, I mean, everybody uses Twitter. And the great thing is, you don't, even if you're um, a little bit more, um, uh, introverted. Twitter is easy. You know what I mean? You just, you type in your characters and you just, you know, you can, even if you don't want to say anything, just retweet. It does get attention. People see when you're retweeting them. And, but I also tell people if you're going to, if a reporter has a story or something that's out there or they're looking for something, make sure you have what they're looking for. You know, don't just say, oh yeah, I can do it because you will lose credibility very fast. So if, if they're asking for people who know how to milk cows and you've never milked a cow, maybe you don't want to answer that one. <laughs> You know, so like, I know people that are just like answering anything. Don't just answer anything. Like make sure that you're going to give them good content because then they'll come back to you again and it will be a great story about you. So I raise, your, raise your hand in the comments if you've milked a cow. Right. <laughs> and we will make sure that we uh, answer tweets for you about that. But you know, Dawn, what you just said, and thank you for asking that question, Christine, because it kind of brings us full circle to stop making stuff, start making money because if you are making the products that you're selling, one of the things that I personally want you to know if you're just getting started is about 15 to 20% of what you do is going to be making. The rest of it is going to be marketing and getting your brand out there. And that doesn't happen when you're mixing things. So Don, talk a little bit about that, what I have really discovered to be an 80 and 80 20 split. I mean, look at me right now. I'm doing a show. I have, um, you know, people coming to the show. This is marketing for me. This, this is, this, I'm not, I'm not with my members. I'm not creating content for my members. My business is a membership organization. I do entrepreneurial training. This is kind of related to that, but this is not targeted to just my members. This is targeted to anyone who's interested in what I'm doing. So this is, you know, something that I do that's not, you know, mixing. This is like getting the word out. So Dawn, talk a little bit about that, again, 80-20 split and how you, I mean, because you, you had to migrate from that, right? Because at first you were making everything yourself and you didn't have any customers. So you had to just make stuff and, you know, try and make the best that you could and then get the word out that way. And you know, that's, that's the quickest way to keep making stuff and not making money is to keep making the stuff. And I have gotten into that pitfall that I don't get out of my own way. Eventually, and Donna Maria has helped me with this, once you set up processes, you have recipes, you have lists, you have processes, you have exactly a standard operating procedures, you're gonna have to learn to pass that off to someone else. Because you're the only one, especially at the beginning, who's the face of the brand, who knows the brand message. You're the only one who's really going to be out, able to get out there until you get to a certain level where maybe you can hire other people and sell your brand. If you're in the kitchen constantly making things, you can't sell things. You know, you, you, you just can't do it. And that, that was a tough lesson for me to learn. And it was also something when I was uncomfortable or I felt like I didn't know what to do or I didn't know the next step to take, I'd fall back into, oh, I'm busy, I'm making stuff. And, mm -hmm. and that's where you can stay. And then you'll have a whole bunch of stuff that you may sell to a couple of friends and family, but you're not building your brand. So the best thing I think that you can start to do, even if you're, you're making operating procedures and recipes and things like that, and it's your daughter or your son or your mom or somebody in your family that you're training to make these things so that you can start to get to the point where you can step away. Because once you have these recipes, you have, you know, you have your product line and it's solid, not to say there's nothing else you can do there, but you have to be able to pass that up, pass that off because this other marketing, the whole growth and branding side, that's where you're going to get your momentum. That's where you have to really get in high gear 
and push your business to the next level. So you've got to get this yeah. point set and pass yeah. it off to someone else. And then you got to just market set go on the marketing side and branding side. And Dawn, don't you think too, um, you have to define that level of growth yourself because there are occasions, like for example, I can think of one company right now, we might actually have her on the show, who does make everything herself. But there's three things that, that she does that Dawn's not talking about right now because that's what her brand is. Number one, her brand is I make everything myself. Like okay. I do it with these hands. That is right. a big part of her brand. So you can create something if that's what you want. And I think that's really the key. Um, yeah. Defining what you want before you actually start spending tons of money so you know exactly I mean, you're going to tweak things as you go. Things are going to change. But you kind of have to have an idea of what you want your life to look like as you start your business so that you can create a business that feeds that and not create this monstrosity of a business that ultimately you look at your life one day and go, oh, I hate my life because right. I'm doing something I don't really enjoy. Right. And I think the great thing about what you just said, and it sort of talk, speaks to what, what Christine and I just said, is if her brand is I make all my own stuff, that's her brand. So she's probably building a lot of content from making her own stuff. She's probably got pictures of herself making things. She talks, she blogs about making things. She's got video. So she's actually doing that brand and marketing while actually making the product. So it's sort of, it's, it's sort of in, the, in the same sense. And I'm sure she's got procedures and she can yeah. get help if she needs to. Yeah. But that's such a big part of her branding. She's building her content right within it. But she's doing it on purpose. You know, and I think some people just start making stuff and yeah. you know, make it go away. So, so I think mm. that's awesome. Right. And I love what you said about you touched upon something. It went by real fast because you talk, you, you have so much to offer. Try to see if I, I talk can it. I do. Oh, um, like when the content is the product. And I think that's what social media allows us to do. It allows us to create content that essentially is the product. So for example, here's a picture of a video of me mixing the bath bomb, or here's my assistant mixing the bath bomb, or here we are heading to uh, the Whole Foods Market to showcase our products at a live demo, right? So the social media marketing actually becomes the product, which means you're not really marketing, you're just telling everybody what you're doing. Exactly. And, and I think what's great for that too are things like Insta story and, and Facebook live. You can, while you're doing your work, you could, you always got to have your, your phone and your camera. You are building content. I think yeah. it's, it's such a great way social media is set up. You're taking, but you have to remember to do it. You have to remember to snap those pictures and, you know, do a little blurb and things like that. And build it. How do you decide on which one to do? Like there's Facebook stories, Instagram stories, Snapchat, then there's regular Instagram video, regular Facebook video, Facebook Live. There's Twitter, there's Periscope. I know we can't dive really deeply into this and you guys need to get the X fact, the S factor so you can read what Dawn says about it. But Dawn, how do you decide? Like you could be everywhere, but you're, you're not. How did you decide for your brand for now, because I know things change over time, where you needed to be? Um, one, you have to figure out where your target market is and where they are. And I, I found out between Facebook, Twitter, and now Instagram, that's where my market was. Um, so I sort of use them differently. To me, I found that Facebook, uh, for, for me, people don't buy from Facebook. And I did, I put up a Facebook store. Um, I put links there. They like to go to Facebook for information. To me, Facebook is like they're reading the newspaper. Like, oh, they just want to see things. Instagrammers are a younger demographic. They click that button and they buy. And I don't know if that's for everyone, but that's from doing my research. And I think you have to research social media where you're getting the most bang for your buck. I would say start with two, maybe three. If you start with all of them, you're going to have the same content plastered all over everywhere, and you're not going to be able to keep up with it. And then you're going to wind up giving up everything. I think it's better to focus on one or two things and do them really strong. And then develop a system, develop a, I'm going to post one or two times a week, develop a little, a, a mini calendar. It doesn't have to be overwhelming, but make sure you stick to it. If you say you're going to post to Instagram twice a week, post to Instagram twice a week. So don't start out too big, but find out where you're getting the most engagement back from your customers. If you're posting things on Facebook and nobody's talking to you, then maybe you should start tweeting things out. Are people retweeting? Are they asking you questions on Twitter? You know, see where your customers really are. 
And for me, I found that they are really on Instagram. So I focus most of my attention on Instagram. I still tweet. I mean, definitely Twitter is important. And I still post on Facebook. But I know when I want to get something out there, I'm going to Instagram. Don, you use events as well to brand your business and sell more products. Tell us about your events. I love this. I always want to go to New Jersey every time you have some, <laughs> you had some amazing things. Some you've done on your own. Some you've done in collaboration with other makers um, in, the, in the retail and studio space that you have there. Tell us about your approach to branded events and how they help your business grow and increase sales. If, if you have the space for it, branded events are great. People are always looking for something to do, whether it's DIY, whether it's girls night, whether there's something with their kids. If that's something that you can incorporate into your brand and your brand message, that would be, that, that would be a very good revenue stream for you. Um, for us, it's been a great revenue stream. I work alongside another indie maker, LaShonda Tyree from Naya. And together, we put a, together a program called Beauty That Cares. And we do workshops for young girls through Girl Scouts where they make their own products and they become entrepreneurs and then they get a badge for it. But what it does is it also gives us visibility. We've got Girl Scouts in there. We've got Girl Scout moms in there. So they're in there. They're seeing our Beauty That Cares, but they're also seeing our individual products. So everything sort of funnels back to the products and building the brand again. And then I started doing separate um, workshops where I have women come in. I called it Pinot and Polish, where they have a glass of Pinot, and they make nail polish and body polish. And it's super fun. So I'm getting a lot of girls' night groups. And it's women that I, I don't really know, I haven't known before, that are looking for something to do. But now I have people that I'm adding to my mailing list and that are now sort of connected to Puka. So now I'm, I'm getting them into my brand and my brand story through one fun event. And a lot of, a lot of them have come to one event and become you know, great customers for a really long time. So if you can do a branded event, it's a great time for, especially because it's summertime, people are looking for things to do. You don't have to do them all the time, but one cute little event can really get you some new customers for a lifetime. So, one um, cute little event, y'all. Just cute one, cute, one cute little, little event. event. I love it. And if you can do it with someone else, that's even better. You know, partner with yeah. someone else and do it. Um, yeah. It, it, it really does build a, another. And then it's great social media. There are great pictures. All those people who came to your event, they all take pictures. They tag you on their social media. And, so, and then it just sort of builds itself out, out, and out. You can get a lot of bang for your buck for, from one event. And, and you're going to partner, partner with people who use social media. Like, don't. Yeah. Be an avid social media user and partner with someone that's got like three followers and five yeah. Instagram tweets for yeah. a year. Yeah. Um, don't, don't do that. Make sure you have parity in the person right. or the people that you're partnering with. So Don, as, as we are, we're going to roll to our um, fun questions in a second. But first, I want to remind you guys, if you share this video and tag a friend, you are going to be entered into a contest to win some of Dawn's Puka Pure and Simple products. Um, and you know what? We're going to make it the Aloha Kiwi line. Ooh, it's okay. And it's summertime, and we all need a trip to Hawaii. And yeah. we can't go, necessarily, mm -hmm. so we're going to go through Dawn's line. So make sure you share and tag a friend. So Dawn, what is, I know it's Aloha Kiwi Tang right now, but generally, like, what is your most popular and best-selling product? Um, our body butters are our best selling products, um, the pomegranate and the guava mango. And, and I've learned from my, from just through a lot of trial and error and just ch checking our tr trends, our people like fruity products. You know, I mean, I throw some other things in there, the lavenders and sandalwoods, and they like those, but anything we do fruity, kiwi, pineapple, it just flies out the door. So for us, our body, our guava mango and pomegranate body butter, top seller. Well, puka sounds um, fun. It, it, it sounds fruity. It doesn't sound, I yeah. mean, the brand name itself doesn't make me go, oh, I'm Zenny. Right. It makes me go, woohoo. <laughs> and I'm a puka leader, too. I need that sound bite. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I think it's great. So I'm glad that you said that. And, and learning that your, your customers will tell you Right. what to do like okay Don the lavender is great but we want more guava I mean once you start talking to them on social media and elsewhere you, it takes out a lot of the guesswork because they will tell you I like it I don't like it and and then you can just go okay well I'll do more of what you like duh and your business will ultimately grow because your customers will be giving you that feedback so Don we're going to get to our fun questions. I should call it our puka questions okay. <laughs> because they're fun. So, um, and these are just kind of things we ask people 
um, just kind of off the cuff to learn a little bit more about them personally. So Dawn, what is your favorite smoothie recipe? I used to have a favorite smoothie recipe, but a friend of mine, Donna Maria, hooked me onto this new smoothie that I have had every day for the last two weeks. Coconut milk, um, spinach, mango, and banana. And then I throw a little flaxseed in there. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm having it for breakfast. I'm, have, I'm having like smoothie overload. I'm like, all right, I can't eat this every day. But it's delicious. Like that's the best smoothie. I, the coconut milk really just takes it to the next level. Okay, well, let me credit my brother for that recipe. All um, right, that Gary really was that one. <laughs> Jeffrey Coles, who is um, <laughs> like one of the most amazing men I know, um, gave me that smoothie recipe. So, um, and I wasn't expecting that. Dawn and I actually had that smoothie together at a fabulous Palm Beach spa. Um, mastermind I've vacation. Had it ever since. Every day I've had it. Yeah, we have to talk about that another time. Okay, so Dawn, what is your big tip for anyone who wants to start a running program? You mentioned that recently. Yeah. <laughs> I so hesitate from calling myself a runner. I just knew I had to get some more uh, exercise in. I start out really good. I'm running. By the end, I'm like calling 911. I'm dragging myself back to my house. But you know what the key is? I don't give up. If I say I'm going to do three miles, I do three miles. It may be walking, it may be dragging. If you have to start out slow, walk, then it's fine. Also, get the right sneakers. I've run, um, I ran at the beginning. I had the bad sneakers, really hurt my knees, hurt my back. I went and I got um, a pair of Asics and uh, Brooks sneakers. And the difference in running has been phenomenal. Like the pain is gone. And there's also a great um, app couch to 5k and that's so where i was on the couch but it helps you to just build up little at a time couch Good. to 5k is it and it's on it's, it's on um uh galaxy uh, android and um iphone so you can get it on either one i love that when i ask you one question you deliver like 10 answers i mean you know like it's like an interviewer's dream here okay so last but not least if you could only use one social media outlet christine we are getting down and dirty on the content now one there's only one if, forget your newsletter for a second i'm talking about traditional social media what would it be and why I'm gonna have to say, I, I would think I would say Instagram, but I'm gonna have to say Twitter. I think Twitter is just more robust. You're reaching way more people on Twitter. Um, everybody's not in, on Instagram. I, I think, I don't know the actual numbers, but I know that there are more people, everybody is using Twitter. So I would keep Twitter and just always tech, uh, add pictures on there and retweet and do a little more video on Twitter. I would, I would focus in more on Twitter, but. I'd have to go with Twitter. On that and one. maybe if you went with Twitter, you could add Periscope for your live video because exactly. Twitter owns Periscope. So we didn't talk okay. about that. But, a uh, for one. but you know, and I want to remind you guys, this is a snapshot in time because you all know social media can change in a second. Twitter could be yeah. dead tomorrow. Yep. So the answer would obviously be completely different or they could change things so much that Dawn doesn't get the return that she that she's getting now. So if you're watching this on the replay or next year, I want you to remember that, right? This is a snapshot in time. Business moves really, really fast today. So what you're hearing here from Dawn is her tips for today. If we interview her in 12 months, I guarantee you a lot of them are going to change because that's how we have to, you know, keep up with moving with technology and business today, right? Right, Christine? Absolutely. The trends are changing. So you, you definitely have to keep up with the trends too. Well, Christine, you know, you're talking about trends. So Dawn, before we go, because now I have one more question. I promise this is the last <laughs> one. Did you guys know I was a journalism major in college? <laughs> I do all day yeah, ask questions. Um, but I actually think that's how come I've been successful in business because I ask a lot of questions. But Dawn, like, how do you keep up? Like, do you subscribe to something that keeps you up on all this stuff? Is there a magazine that you read? What do you do? Um, no, there for actually for beauty and for, um, for recipes and things like that, there's, I'm sure everybody knows Willow and Sage. Have uh -huh. you ever heard of that magazine? Yes. I love that magazine. So I make sure I get that. That's my treat. Um, I do use a lot of AppSumo, A-P-P-S-M-O, mm -hmm. um, that you get really good, um, deals on di different digital apps and things like that. And then I'm really, I'm all over indie. 
because that's really, I mean, for our business, but that's where you're going to find the trends. All the makers are there. I'm learning from, from other people in my industry. I mean, that's the best place to dive in. Is that, is that the Indie Business Network at IndieBusinessNetwork.com? <laughs> yep, IndieBusinessNetwork.com. I mean, because people are always asking great questions, which is something I'm always usually thinking of. I can go right in that group, and that's, that's my go-to place. So that's where I keep up with what's going on, and that's pretty much all I usually have time for. So. Okay, so Dawn, we, we're going to get to the prizes that we're going to win. I want you to tell us what we have an opportunity to win and how we should shop. But I want to remind you guys that I will be in Boston on June 24th and 25th at Maker Mastermind Live. I will be there delivering my 52 steps to your successful business. I call it my indie method. I'm going to deliver that to you. We are going to go to the Renegade Craft Fair and we're going to see everything that I share with you about brand building in action at the fair. And then we're going to come back the next day and we're going to mastermind the pants off your business. Okay? <laughs> so we're going to have a small group, not a lot of people because I, I like the intimacy. We get a lot more done. It's not a bunch of speakers and all that stuff. We're going to dive down into your brand and we're going to make stuff happen. You're going to leave with a business plan for the next six months of your business. So I want to encourage you to check out makermastermindlive.com and register for that. Um, so Dawn, what can we win and where do we go to buy? We, you can go to buy at pukapureandsimple.com. That's really long, I know. P-O-O-K-A. P U R E A N D S I M P L E dot com. And today we're going to be giving away through Indie Business Network our Aloha Kiwi. Actually, we're going to throw a pineapple in there too. So Ooh. you're going to get Aloha hey. Kiwi Sugar Scrub Mist and Body Butter. We have two of those sets. And then we're going to have a pineapple Sugar Scrub Mist and Body Butter as well. So we've got three fruity <laughs> scents that will actually be better than if you actually went to Hawaii. That's Ooh. not true, oh. but. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> Better than Hawaii. Oh, my goodness. Okay, guys. So three products, two of them in the Aloha Kiwi and one in the pineapple. I mean, again, Dawn, we can go back and do our little hula, right? It's just so awesome. I mean, you know, where can you go to get smoothie recipes, running tips, chances to win free products, and social media strategy in one place in 50 minutes? And well, where, can, where else can you go to get that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Christine, any parting thoughts? I am just so psyched that you went so in depth with your, not only your social media, but your content, you know, that gives me chills. So <laughs> some great tips for everybody because, you know, people come in and go, God, where do I start? So Dawn, you told us exactly what to do and how you did it. Wow. So thanks. Yeah. Thank and remember, another great place to start is at basicsmarketing.com. B-A, the number six marketing.com with Christine. She's a content marketing expert. She's all over helping you with your email newsletter and your blogging and other content marketing. And then of course, follow Dawn, just follow her, follow her at Puka Lita, P-O-O-K-A-L-I-T-A -O -O -A on Instagram and Twitter and follow her on Dawn Fitch official because I happen to know some really super cool and fun stuff is coming up over there. <laughs> okay, I have the inside scoop, but I'm not going to let that out of the bags. We're going to have to have you on the show later on this year or early next year so you can tell us all the great stuff that you're doing behind the scenes over there. Yes, ma'am. Cool, cool. I'm definitely going to come back. All right, pukapureandsimple.com. Share, you have a few more seconds to share and tag a friend to enter to win. We will talk to you later. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. And Dawn, spot Thanks, on guys. for everything. Congratulations on your success. And when we use Twitter to get on a magazine cover, we are going to thank you. Yay. Yeah, man. All right, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.